Our guest today is Rebecca Turk, and Rebecca is the art, education, and event director at Moore Farms Botanical Garden down in Lake City. Rebecca likes to do things that are use nature in, in the involvement of it. So Rebecca, what have you got planned for today? So we're going to make some really fun pine cone zinnias today. Which pine is, cone zinnias? I know, it sounds crazy, but it's a great craft to do all year long using the pine cones that you might have in your backyard in your neighborhood. So you'll go out and collect pine cones right when they fall. All so right. winter's the you best want to be time. fresh. Yep. And I like to use these small pine cone sizes because they're easier to cut with hand pruners. Yes. The larger you get, the harder it is to cut. So Rebecca, um, you said that you actually can cut them and then use, kind of decide which parts you're going to use. So let's cut one and then talk about how we can use both sides of it. Sure. To get different effects. So I like to take my pruners and I put it right in the middle, get it nice and tight. You're going to break your fingers some out of, of the way. You're going to break some of the little pieces and that's fine. And then you're just going to cut it right in half. They'll make a little bit of a mess, but that's no problem. And then you have a few different kinds of options of flowers. Okay, so this one, um, you look like you've already got the center of the zinnia there, and that's kind of an open form zinnia, isn't right. it? Right, it's an open one that a lot of people see in like wildflower mixes, and it's a beautiful one to use, but my favorite's actually the back side of this. Oh, really? Oh, gosh, that's really attractive. Looks like the lily putt zinnia, which is the really tight one that is one of the older zinnias that you always just kind of think of in maybe your grandmother's okay. garden. And then what about the top? You also can use the top, and it's more of an open type zinnia. You can get some really delicate um, and really distinct painting designs on these, which is a lot of fun too, and it creates, creates a lot of texture in okay. what you're doing also. So let's see about getting the paint on them then. Sure, what that sounds great. What kind of paint do we use? So I like to use um, acrylic paint, and it needs to be outdoor, indoor paint. Um, even if you know you're going to put it indoors, use outdoor paint too, because you never know if you might want to take it outside. You might have a party or a picnic or something and decide to take it with you. Exactly. And it might rain. Exactly. And if it's indoor paint only, it's, and if it, the rain hits it or moisture hits it, it's just going to wash right off. So you've off. got a lot of beautiful colors out here. And so um, how do you, what do you use to put the paint on? Sure. So I like to use a larger paintbrush first and then some small ones to do the detail work. Okay. And it's just the best way to go about it. And, well, you know, I like this one, so I'm going to start with that one. And I'm a fan of the lily pad, so I'll do this <laughs> one. But you pick the color that you want, okay. and then you just you dab away, and you cover that full surface to begin with. And you just continue dabbing until you get all the bulk areas covered. You can always come back in with a smaller paintbrush. And I'm using the green because when I was a little girl, my mother would paint would plant the envy zinnias. Do you remember those? Yes, a lot yeah. of people don't realize that there are green zinnias, but they're yeah. some of the prettiest ones. So that kind of takes me back to my childhood. They also just created this really fun Xenia series that's more antique looking, so you can make some that look a little bit older too, which can be a lot of fun also. Well, and I've been reading, Rebecca, too, that the Xenias that have the open form are really fabulous for pollinators. So, um, so there are lots of reasons to put them in your garden. Right, and you know, Xenia flower seeds are just one of the greatest things to just throw in your Boy, landscape you. and let them germinate and be happy all. All summer okay. long. Now I want to get a little color in the inside of mine. May I use one of those little of brushes? Of course. Great. So this is the best way to make them look realistic. So you can come in and take another color and you know add a design in, blend colors together. Uh, I love blending colors. I think it uh, can make them look even more realistic. But the, a lot of zinnias actually have multiple colors to them, not just one color. So if you're going well, for that fun. realistic look. I don't think I'm being realistic, but I sure am having a good time. And you know what? You don't have to be realistic at all. You can have as much fun as you want. Okay. Now, sometimes you might not have the color that you want, mm -hmm. so you can actually make a color lighter or blend colors together. So if you want to make light pink, for example, you could put some white paint down and put a tiny bit of red. Okay. And then just mix it together. Now, you want to start with your white first. Okay. Because the red is darker and it makes it lighter faster. If you put the red down first and then add white, oh Lord, you're, you're going to waste so much a paint. lot of red paint. Okay, well that's a great tip. Thank you. No problem. And then you can use that and I'm going to make a center in mine to look like a real Okay, zinnia. great. Well, Beck, I guess now we're at the point we might want to start attaching them to our wreath. Yes, you're exactly right. And that is a really fun part. And what I like to do is I actually will take some hot glue, um, and I like to use a high quality hot glue. So at the store, you'll find a wide array of quality. Higher quality, the better uh, it, it stays holds up. and it holds right. up. Right, okay. And so the best thing to do with that, and I pre-painted a few of them so that they would be dry for us to attach, is to 
Put some hot glue on the back. And remind people that that will burn your fingers, so be careful. It will. Even if you buy what they consider like a fast drying or a cool glue, it, it still, still will burn your finger. So I like to put a bunch on the back and then a little bit on where I'm attaching. And then you're going to hold it in place. And Rebecca, people, if they have grapevines and they have to one. prune them, they can save those. Or it's very easy to find these wreaths at your craft store. Exactly. And I like the grapevine because if a little bit of it shows through, it's attractive. Um, but then also, it um, is very cost effective. And you can use a styrofoam one, but I have realized myself that it doesn't hold up very well. Well, this is a lot, a lot of work, even though it's fun, and I want it to last a long time. Yes, and it's great to hang on your front door, or you can hang it inside. Um, I have a, a basket of these in my daughter's room, and it's just a great thing to have in the house all year long. And you can paint them to match seasons, too. So if you want one that's more around Christmas, you can paint it to match Christmas That'd be fun, Christmas like, colors. Like maybe like poinsettias mm -hmm. instead of zinnias. Well, Rebecca, it looks like it's going to take us a while to do that, so we're going to come back in a little bit, and while we're doing that, I think I may see if I can make a hat. Yeah, it sounds like a great idea. We have a lot of fun. <laughs> Rebecca, look at this. It's so colorful and so much fun. I know this just makes you want to just embrace, you know, spring and all the bright colors. And it's great for summer, too. So, you know, you can do this for multiple seasons like we talked about. But it's just you can't help but to smile when you see it. And although we use the indoor outdoor paint, you've got a tip for making it even more outdoor proof. Yes. Yeah, so using a clear enamel spray. Uh -huh. um, it's a great way to just do a final seal over it. If you ever add any pine cones to it later, seal it again. All right. Uh, I like to use the matte because I like them to look more realistic still, but if you like a shiny appearance or a gloss, you could choose to use a gloss enamel spray and it gives it a nice shine. Too. And if people want to, um, some people like bows, and if they want to mm -hmm. do that, then they could do one like this one where you just use a portion of the reef to attach your cones to. Exactly. And you need a lot less pine cones too. <laughs> so if you're in more of a a rush or want it by a certain occasion, that's a great way to go about it also. And I also um, like to hand paint them all, but you can choose to spray paint the base of it also, but I prefer to hand paint them because I think you make them more realistic looking that I way. I think so too. Well, I had fun because I got to make a hat. I, I like know, to make and your hats. hat is beautiful. <laughs> I love it so much. Well, thank you for the idea. And you said sometimes people might want to just have a vase on their desk. How do you get them attached to these dowels? Yes, yeah, so you can buy these dowels at any craft store. Um, I like to buy the round ones because it looks like, more like the stem. Yes. And you can also paint the stem brown or green. But you actually just hot glue one of your pine cones and has onto the top and oh. just hold it still until it fully sets. And then you're good and set to go. And if you don't want to take the time to make a doweled one or a wreath, you can also just put them in a little pretty basket, too. Uh huh. And they are. They're just lovely. Well, Rebecca mm -hmm. Turk, if people want to know more about the fun things that are happening down your way, at beautiful Moore Farmers Botanical Garden, how do they get that information? So they can go to our website at www.moorefarmsbg.org. They can find out all about our programs, our classes, our events, or they can follow us on our Facebook page, too. And we also have some promos sometimes for different programs that we have coming up on our Facebook page. Well, and I hope that also when people tune into Making It Grow, we'll have representatives from your organization here because it sure is a red letter day when y'all come to see us. Well, we always love coming to visit and be on this show. And thank you so much for having me show Pinecone Zinnias today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.